Good afternoon, welcome to the shed. The day has finally come when we're going to restore our Stanley number eight. This I bought at um, the local market or off a, a contact from the local market a few months ago. It's been in my drawer waiting restoration for, well, all of that time. It's in pretty good condition. Um, I think it was covered with some sort of oil or, or uh, grease when it was packed away, however many years ago that was. So it's actually really quite, quite going to be quite an easy restore. Uh, I'm going to do a, one of my sympathetic restores, basically just bring it back to a working tool without any repainting or taking away any metal or anything like that. It's nice and straight. I don't think we'll have any problems. I certainly don't think that I'll be able to improve the flatness of it. Uh, I don't think I have the tools for that and I, I don't think it's necessary anyway. So this plane, I think this one's 1909 from what I remember, uh, 1907 to 1909, a Type 7. I've had to check that and I? Good job I checked. It's a Type 10 which is 1907 to 1909. There's a really good website which I'll link to down below uh, where you can basically you plug in the different aspects of your plane and it'll just take you to the different type uh, that you've got which is the, the date range so during the history of the planes different things changed across all of the models so you can use that to determine what age it is and that's the type I think there's 15 different types nothing to do with the number on here this is a number eight which is refers to the size and type of the plane okay I'll take you over to the bench here and uh, we'll take it apart and have a look at see what we've got. I'll also tell you a few of the things that uh, you can use to help date the plane. One of the factors that you use when dating these is whether or not there's a raised ring around the knob. So you see on the number eight there is no ring. It bolts straight onto the um, body of the plane or the sole of the plane. On this number seven which is a later one you'll see that there's a raised rib around the knob. Um, also on the later ones you have a ridge around the edge of the uh, of the sole of the plane. Um, okay so if we take the plane apart again move that on out of the way we have got this very standard um, cap iron don't think that's got any plating on it but that's the simple design there's another one with some ribs on it which is comes later uh, one of the problems with this plane is there's very little of the iron left it has got a good edge so I'm gonna to have to be careful not take too much off just give that a little bit of a sharpen when we come to clean it up all of these parts will get cleaned on the back of the iron it says Stanley patent applied 19 and 92 that's obviously not in the year 1992 because that wouldn't equate can't see any markings on that yet but there might be something when we come to give it a clean okay um, now the frog itself is the early simplified version the later ones have some uh, metal taken away there presumably to make it a little bit lighter I'm not sure stronger possibly um, yeah so this is again another indication that it's an early one if we take the frog off there's a couple of other factors that you can look at one is how the patent is stamped onto the lateral adjustment lever so this one's got Stanley written horizontally there are some that have it written down vertically it's also got one patent number on there again another factor you can use to determine the age another factor you can use for dating is the number of patents that are stamped onto the body here so that says patent March 20 can't see what that says 
March 25th, 02, and August 1902. So again, you can use that to help you date it. This one has rosewood handles, I believe. They're the sought after ones. And it is actually stamped with somebody's name on there, I think. Well, I can't really see what it says. It might just be a mark. There you go. Handles are in good condition. All the bolts, screws, these are brass. They'll come up nicely. So we're going to give it a good clean. Soap and water. Bit of wire wool and, and uh, methylated spirits on the sides and the bottom. You can see that the throat is in pretty good nick and the whole thing is actually going to be a nice easy clean. So there you go, that's what we're going to do. Let's get started. I'll just take these knobs off. When you're buying these planes you quite often get bits that have been swapped um, so if you can find an original one or that looks as if all the bits match up then you should be okay quite often they do get mixed up so these are brass these nuts very nice they will be once they're cleaned up that's the handle okay that's all our bits we'll start by giving a bit of a brush not going to be any surprises I don't think on this one it's in lovely condition really considering its age I think the guy that uh, I bought these planes well, that they came from I'd obviously put them in storage properly because this has got a waxy residue or something on there that he's used to stop them going rusty. So thank you that man. I don't know who you are, but well done. Okay, let's see if we can get a good close up of the cleaning process or a piece of the cleaning process. I haven't washed it yet. I thought decided it would be better to use the meths first. I don't want to introduce any water. So a bit of meths, a bit of wire wool, and basically a bit of elbow grease. It takes off all of the residue that was on there. So I just used meths and some fine wire wool to take off the residue and then I finished it off with some 280 grit paper and then 600 to give it a smooth finish. That seems to do the job quite nicely. It's not a polished finish, but that's not really what I'm after. I also tried a bit of window cleaner uh, as a lubricant as well, because I've seen others do that and that seemed to work just as well. In all, it took about 40 minutes to do the, uh, the body of the plane. And it's not bad really, it turned out quite nice. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to take it. I've done that down to a 400 grit. There's still some discoloration, but for me, that's good enough. Okay, so I'm now going to go and wash the paint. I've noticed on this one that the edge is actually got the paint or the Japanning, as they call it, on it. So I'd, normally I take that off, but I'm not going to in this case. Uh, so I'm going to go and give it a good old scrub, clean it, oil it, then that bit can be put aside ready for the next stage. And I have to make a decision whether we need paint or not.
I was wrong about these edges, they are metal. It's just dirt, I think. So we have lost quite a bit of paint. Oh, under the frog, which isn't too much of a problem. Quite a bit around the knob there. I don't know what to do. Okay, that's decision made. I'm gonna leave it. I'm worried I'll make it worse if I paint it. And oiling it gives it a bit of a shine. And we'll stop it rusting again. Okay, that's the body done, or the sole done. I think that's the right decision. I think if I paint it, I'll make it worse. Let's leave it like that. I can always paint it later if I feel like I need to. Uh, I just need to clean these lines up here with a bit of paper. So next up is the frog. It's been bashed a bit. varnish or something on there. Okay, dismantle it. I'll just get that off, no damage to the thread. Okay, that's good. Now it's over to the wire wheel to clean up the frog. I borrowed a mic uh, and this is much better I think. If you have a drill press or even a hand drill with a wire wheel it makes this job much easier. It does leave micro scratches but on the frog, cap iron and iron that is acceptable as the factory finish is similar. I won't show you all the process as it takes a while but I did this for all the steel parts including screws, rods and brass nuts. Now it's onto the rosewood handles. I just used a bit of wire wool and some meths just to clean all of the grime of over a century of use. Um, I find this is best. If I try and sand them, it just doesn't seem to work properly. I can never get the finish back to how it should be. Best to leave it with a nice aged finish. The front knob uh, does actually have the owner's name stamped on it. I think it says R Parking or P Parking, something like that. So maybe he was an apprentice or just proud of his tools. I guess this would have been a very expensive bit of kit back in the day. Okay, it's time to sharpen it now. Um, the blade is actually wider than my stone, so I had to do a bit of a sort of uh, left to right action to make sure I covered the complete width of the blade. I used a thousand grit stone uh, and an angle of about 30 degrees. Once I'd got an even cut across the front of the blade, all the way across, nice and straight, I then switched to the 6000 stone uh, and added a micro bevel and then just did a bit of work on the back of the blade uh, just to take the burr off and then it was over to the leather strop. And of course, finish off with the hair on the arm test. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so that's the end of the uh, the work side of things. I hope you like my new uh, way of presenting with the, the, the narration rather than uh, just a speeded up version of the um, cleaning process. I was getting a lot of people just giving up at that point in the video, so I thought I'd try something different. Let's hope it works, let me know if you like it. Okay, it went really well. Uh, I've spent a lot of time getting things really nice and clean. Uh, it's restored 
sympathetically, so it's not, you know, I haven't gone for a, a polished finish, I've just gone for a clean finish. A lot of grime on there, 110 years of, of muck and grime to clear off, uh, but I think it's turned out nicely. Let's put it back together. I have, of course, got my plain assembly cup of tea. Oh, lovely. I've been gardening this afternoon, so I'm a bit dirty. Apologies for that. Okay, let's get this together. First of all, the tote handle. I always put this on in the wrong order, so I'm going to get it right this time. I've already oiled the holes a little bit, so we should be ready to go. polish on those on those handles reverse thread the uh, the knobs a bit mushroomed somebody's had a bit of a pair of pliers on there at some point Um, I've got a good edge on there there isn't a lot left of the blade and that's where that's the hardened steel and that's the normal steel I heard rumors that Stanley only did like half an inch but obviously not on the early ones um, this so this is good hardened steel it needs to be tight but you still need to be able to move it that's about right there is a little bit of a bend in there. I'm not sure if that's intentional. I hope it's the original part. Okay. There it is. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's give it a test. Okay, let's give it a go. This is the first time this has been used in however many years. There's not a lot of room in this shed for a big plane like this, believe it or not. You know that old old saying, there's not enough room to swing a number eight in here. Okay, let's go. I was coming onto the woods, but that's that's going now. Good shaving. There is a knot in this wood. Okay, so there it is. Works really well, straight out the box. Well, straight out of the restoration. Looks really nice. Proper piece of engineering. I don't know if this one's British or, or American. Could probably work it out, but it's a lovely, lovely plane. Really happy that I finally got that one done. Um, yeah, that's staying in the collection, not selling that one. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know how, how, what you thought of the uh, narration style. Uh, and if you don't like it, I'll change it. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.